Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in this video we are going to see what are dynamic inventories in Ansible and how they work in AWS Cloud. So yes, we'll be focusing on AWS Cloud because if you remember in our last video we launched our nodes in AWS, right? So we'll be focusing exclusively and explicitly on AWS. So we have covered static inventory in the previous video. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, please do go and check it out before you watch this video. So you'll probably understand, I mean, you'll have a better understanding of how inventory, what are inventories and how they work. Uh, so yeah, so we'll be, like I said, we'll be keeping our discussion to only AWS. Like you, I told you that we have launched our nodes in AWS, right? So dynamic inventories, let's, so suppose you have, uh, I mean, a big enough infrastructure in cloud where you bring in and bring down servers say on day-to-day -day basis like you bring down 10 servers you bring up five servers right so maintaining static inventory in that case is actually impossible because you can't be putting in ips or host names manually in the static uh, inventory file so if you remember st static inventory file actually works on either ips or host names right so this is where the dynamic inventories come in so dynamic inventories are basically nothing they're just i mean some code and some script that connect to your cloud whatever cloud you're using uh, in this case i mean in our case it's aws and fetch the inventory from there and i mean dynamic inventories in ansible are not only limited to aws they, you can i mean you can have any cmdb any cloud openstack their custom uh, plugins as well right so there are two ways actually to implement dynamic inventories in ansible it's either via plugin or via script. So here in this video, in this example, I'm going to use script, but let's just go to Ansible website, Ansible documentation website, and have a look at plugin, right? So right now I'm in my AWS console, let's go to Ansible website. So you can see I'm in the Ansible website working with dynamic inventory. And this is where it says that there are two ways. So Ansible support two ways to connect to external inventory, either via, via, via plugin or inventory scripts, right? So let's just go to plugin and see what all plugins are available to us. So let's just go to plugin list. So you can see that AWS EC2 is available, AWS RDS, uh, you have a plugin for Azure. And I mean, there are just a bunch of plugins for VMware, VirtualBox, whatever you need, right? So you can just, I mean, I won't be going, I mean, over them, but just look at what, what's there in AWS EC2. So, I mean, I would actually request you to just go over plugins. If you want to use plugin instead of script, right? So just go over this. So this is, this is actually tells you how to use this plugin, right? So you're calling the plugin, you're telling the region, and things like that all right so to use dynamic inventory there are actually a couple of uh, prerequisites uh, i mean first you need to have a connection to your cloud uh, in our case since we are using aws uh, uh, cloud we we have to have connection from a control node because there this is that is where we are going to configure our uh, dynamic inventory so the control node should be able to make API calls to our AWS cloud and that is possible. I mean, either you can use AWS CLI to configure that. So AWS configure, if you remember, uh, let me go to, so you can see right now I'm logged in into my control node and if I do AWS configure, so I can use this, right? So I have already configured this. So you can see my secret access key and secret access ID are already configured. So this is one way of uh, setting up your credentials uh, on the control node. Uh, another way you can see in the Ansible website itself, uh, there's another way to do it, like exporting the, uh, ex I mean, exporting the variables. So you can directly export, let's go back. And let's go down to AWS example. And yes, so you can export these couple of uh, variables and you'll be set. So I have used AWS CLI. Uh, you can use whatever way you feel like, I mean, it's best for you, right? All right, so now let's start uh, 
creating a dynamic inventory. So dynamic inventory, like I said, will be dealing with the script and all these scripts and plugin are actually provided to you by uh, Ansible itself. So, I mean, you can write your custom plugin, you can create your custom script as long as it is outputting things in the format which, in which Ansible wants, right? So, I mean, but it's always good to have some head start which Ansible provides. So we'll be using the Ansible provided script, right? So let's just go to the Ansible documentation and you would see that it says EC2 external inventory script. So let's just click on this. It's a Python script basically, and it uses Boto. So another prerequisite, like I said, there are a couple of prerequisite. So the first one was to have access to your cloud uh, via credentials, via secret access key ID, whatever cloud you're using, whatever CMDB you are using, you must have access to it. And the second is that you must have Boto installed. So let's just copy this and go back to our server. And we are going to create a file over here called ec2.py and we are going to paste this content in here, right? Save this and let's make it executable, otherwise it will not work. Plus x ec2.py and to see that if you are I mean, if this script will work when using with when 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 used with Ansible, uh, so what you can do is basically ec2.py hyphen hyphen list. So if this script is working and if we are able to connect to our AWS cloud, it would actually list out the EC2 instances which we have running. And just wait for a minute, and it should be coming or it should be displaying some error if it's not able to connect something like that something would happen so just wait so yeah so we got the list of our host right let's just go up 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 and here so it's listing the public ips of our hosts right and some metadata related to those right so there's i mean it's working in short it's working that we are we are getting the data from our cloud that means we have connected to our cloud and uh, our script is working. Now to use the script with Ansible, it's actually very easy. Uh, it, you just need to do Ansible uh, hyphen I like we used to do when we used to provide a custom inventory file, right? So in this case, we'll give it ec2.py, which is our uh, script. Then what we are going to say is where we need to run it. So I want to run it on all the hosts, right? And I'm going to use the module ping, right? So if I haven't done anything wrong, it should work. Let's just wait for a minute. So this might take a few, I mean, not few minutes, but more than a minute, maybe. And it's, you can see it's successful, right? So we are getting the ping, but if you see that it's pinging our public IPs, so probably because, I mean, it's, it's successful because all my servers have a public IP, right? But suppose you have servers running in private subnet and you don't want to go over public IP uh, you can ignore this because it's trying to SSH itself right so that is why so when we gave it all option uh, it, it's trying to SSH itself and that is why it's failing but the other two are uh, the two nodes which are our uh, managed nodes so one has IP 203.234 and 91.135 so let's just uh, confirm it let's just go to our AWS console and see it has 234 right and this has correct so our nodes are working fine right but uh, the question comes right so I don't want this thing to go over internet I want suppose my uh, instances are running in private subnet then what 
So Ansible actually takes care of that as well. So let me just clear the screen. And now let's go to the Ansible documentation website again. And if you come down over here, uh, yeah, so this is this is the file which we are looking for ec2.ini. So this file is basically a configuration file for your dynamic inventory script. So the ec2.py which we copied, uh, this file is actually used to configure that script. So let's just click it. Let's copy all the content in here and go to our uh, server. Let's do an ls. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an ec2 ec2.ini file over here right and just paste all this content in this file let's go at the top of the file and there are a couple of things which we need to configure in this file so this is a very vast configuration file you can see you can configure if you suppose if you're not operating out of all region just the couple of just the couple of regions which you are using you can set that regions over here and the, these are the settings which we actually want to configure so destination variable so right now you can see it is set to public dns name but we don't want uh, to use public dns name we want to use the private dns name right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this paste oh sorry let's just undo this i'm going to have already copied it we have pasted it here and if you read this paragraph you would see that this is the normal destination variable to use if you are running ansible from outside ec2 then you are using public dns name right but we are using an ec2 instance so for that it says that you should use this private dns name so let's just get rid of this paste it over here and we need to comment this line so let's just comment this and there's one more thing which we need to set which is this so vpc destination variable so if you read this paragraph it says almost the same thing as above that if you're running out i mean if you're running your ansible out of aws cloud you would use vpc destination variable as ip address but if you're running from inside an ec2 instance you would actually use this so let's just comment this out and we are good here so now if i do ec2.py hyphen hyphen list you would see the change uh, i mean i am i hope that you should see the change so we again have to wait for a minute because it's going to our AWS cloud, fetching all the metadata on all the resources. And I hope you notice the change. Did you see that these IPs are now private IPs? So if you go above and see the earlier result, you can see that these were public IPs of our host, but now the IPs have changed. They are pub private IP, right? And now if I run the same Ansible command, Let's see if it goes over public IP or private IP. I hope it should go over private IP. All right, so we again have to wait. So this is actually a little slow, I would say. All right, so the first one failed because it was trying to SSH itself. Uh, that is acceptable. But if you see now that it's going over private IP, so it's assisting over private IP and then trying to do a ping. And this is what we wanted, right? Uh, this ec2.ini file is actually um, a big configuration file. If you just go through that content of the file, you can see there are different services which you can configure. And you can even configure this behavior, right? Things like that it should not, uh, right now we are saying that Ansible all. So that is why it's trying to connect to all uh, instances. But there are ways where you can uh, basically uh, SSH on the basis of the tags, right? On the basic basis of, so that it not it does not connect 
it does not try to connect itself but, but rather only connects to the managed node so all those configuration are going into the ec2.ini file so i would just request you to just go through that file it's pretty comprehensive i mean if we start taking a look into that particular file it would take another half an hour to just discuss about that file so you saw that ansible actually provides you all the stuff you actually don't have to do much i mean unless you have a very specific use case you would not require to modify either the script file or the ini file uh, uh yeah so this is it for the dynamic uh, inventory file video guys i hope you like the video i mean we've seen the static uh, inventory we've seen the dynamic inventory we've seen the variables and we have actually touch base with uh, the playbook as well we wrote a very basic playbook so now we'll go deeper into ansible see i mean try to write more complex playbook and see how you can use variables from different locations right so that is all coming up in the next few videos right so please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching